Yes. How's the weekend been so far? It's been so fun. This is like my third convention, so I'm still kind of learning the ropes of how to how to con people. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, yes. So what, now that you're like in the convention scene, what's been your favorite thing so far? It really is. Um, Seeing all the little ones come up to the booth, like even if they just want to talk, I'm always down to talk because I'm paid to do that. But, <laughs> but I'm getting like little toddlers or little babies who, they don't care who I am, but once I start talking like this, oh, their eyes light up so much, and it's the most <laughs> darling thing. I'm sure like us too, as adults, like I just got chills too. So it's like, what a magical experience and this is so wonderful. Now, have you uh, worked with a lot of people at conventions that are also Disney voices? Yes, um, let's see. Like for this convention, it's myself, Rob Paulson, and Maurice LaMarche. So we're in from our group, we're the three mice. And they're the two who want to take over the world and I'm the one who kind of already did. Yes. <laughs> but um, like Rob's done several like, Disney characters kind of in their in their grouping. Maurice has done a lot. He's also like Mortimer Mouse on our show. So not a villain, but not exactly a good guy. Yeah, he's he's the grayscale, but he's so good at that. But I've done I, I did a convention with Jess Harnell, who does a lot of Disney voices as well, and Bill Farmer, who's the voice of Goofy. So we've we've done some fun little things together, but I'm still getting my feet wet. So I'm hoping to do more conventions to yeah. see other people as well. Yeah, that's super exciting. I, I kind of wanted to ask uh, about growing up. Were mm -hmm. you doing voices? Were you mimicking voices, creating your own? What were you like? Growing up, like I had a very thorough animation education. So my parents insisted, like we're going to watch all the old school Looney Tunes. They explained the jokes. Explained. Like, this is what it was like back then, so this is not something we joke about today, but this is a product of its time. Same with all the old Disney cartoons, the Disney movies, the Don Bluth movies. So I, I watched anything and everything, and I was a mimicker for sure. Like, that was my hyper-focus, my hyper-fixation. So listening and repeating back or, or imitating it or trying to sound exactly the same, that's something I've always done. And it would get me in trouble in school because if kids would make fun of me for whatever reason, I would just kind of mimic their voice back to them. But you really mean it, baby. And then I would get in trouble for. We would both get in trouble, but like, but mine was defensive and funny. <laughs> Got to make a career out of it. Exactly. Where are they now? I don't. I don't know. Doesn't matter because I'm doing what I love and I'm having fun, and hopefully everyone out there is having fun too. Yes, this guy right here. <laughs> Hola, Donald. Oh, you look wonderful today. Where's Daisy? Out shopping? We get ready for her. Oh, she does that a lot. Stand strong? Perfect. That's a good costume. Good job, Donald. I, I was going to ask, what, what was the first voice that you like nailed? You're like, I got it. This is perfect. The one, oh, I, I think it was, does anyone remember Chicken Run? Yeah. I love Chicken Run so much. So we would watch that movie in the Scottish one. You know, I fixed up your rig with a Jimmy and I went to the Redland. It was something that she said it really fast in Scottish and I would just do that. And then like, she said she fixed your wing. And it just would make my dad laugh. I'm like, oh, that's something. It's making my dad laugh. And I, I knew I wanted to do more with animation after I saw Aladdin, because I knew who Robin Williams was at the time because I saw Hook like a year or two earlier, and I knew, okay, I want to be an actor and make someone laugh the way he's making me laugh. And then I saw him in Aladdin, like, I want to do it through cartoons. I didn't know you could do that. Like, it, I didn't put two and two together. And so at, from that point on, like, well, how do I get involved in animation? And I grew up in San Diego, so there weren't a lot of acting schools or a lot of junior theater in our community. So it was just kind of like, okay, what can public school give me? So it was, it was a bit slower, like, by the time I was in high school drama, like, a lot of people had done junior theater, so I didn't, like, get cast anything. And then when I went to college, usually the freshmen had done all the shows in junior high, so they were just more advanced. And I was still, like, at the baby stages. So it was, it was a lot slower for me than at the average actor. But I, I prefer to take it slow so I can internalize it and I can really know what am I trying to do here. I have to learn all the rules before I break them or bend them. Of course, and like, you know, time is kind of, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you get to do what you love now, so. And you won't see your own growth. Like, anyone who does any type of skill, you're not going to see your own growth because you live with yourself every day. But if I came back a year from now, 
if I was just starting something and then let's see what happens a year later, everyone else who hasn't seen you in that time, they'll see a huge growth, but you'll just think, have I? Yeah. Maybe I've walked forward a little, but, yeah. but that's kind of part of that growth. And as long as you're enjoying it, as long as you're enjoying that journey to the destination, then it's worth your time, it's worth your effort and your passion. So uh, from what I was researching, like Disney has always been a, mm -hmm. a love of yours, and you were actually like working for Disneyland? Yes, I had worked at Disneyland. It's 2003, right? So like 20 years ago, I hired in there, back when like Brother Bear first came out. My years go by when the Disney movie came out, because that's how I can best. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. yeah. And so I worked there all the way up to the pandemic, and I did about six months juggling mini and working at Disneyland. Because um, it was still a, a very well-kept secret, because after Lucy's passing, it was about a month and some change before I got the role. And we, we caught up on a lot of work that had backlog while she was sick. And up through March, and then the pandemic happened, and like, oh, I guess we're all just kind of on pause. But nobody knew at the time, it was like a fun little secret. But I think, I think working there really helped the people in charge make that decision because I knew about the Disney brand. I knew about our character's integrity. I knew about, you know, how important it is to people because Disneyland or Disney World is the place where you can meet that person, especially for little ones. You can meet the person they love so much right there. So much. It really is the most magical place. I've it ever is. Been. Yeah. I mean, people will put their three-year-olds down and they run out with their arms stretched to go hug Goofy or Donald and, and like, that's what it's about. This is where they can meet the person who made them feel that way. And I, that's the core of my the choice as an actor. Like, I want to make other people feel the way I felt when I saw my favorite actors. For sure. um, out of curiosity, what's your favorite quality about Minnie? I like how she can get sassy. So there's, there's some fun <laughs> moments <laughs> where it's like, Caitlin will pop out a little bit. And, and Lucy did it as well. She had these fun moments of just slightly a double take, like Minnie. Are you good? Like, oh, I'm fine. But we had one part, it's still my favorite thing. There was one episode of, I want to say it was Mixed Up Adventures, and Daisy thinks that her grandmother is a superhero, because she reads these comic books, and her grandmother has a costume in her home. So she, her brain tells her, oh my god, my grandmother is the superhero. It's all true, even though it's just a costume for a costume party. But you don't know that yet. And so she thinks, I need to take over as a superhero. My grandmother's been kidnapped, obviously. Minnie and Cuckoo Loka, you're gonna be my sidekicks and use your superpowers. And then Minnie's response, the typical response would be like, how do we do that? Because we don't know. And But the take they chose was just me where she's, how do we do that? Tell me. Like, she, she's just kind of like, where, where are you taking us, Daisy? Please, how do we do that? I, I am dying for you to tell me. And it's like, that's, that's a me response. That's how I respond to people. And they let it go. They let it in the show. So that, that was the moment for me, like, okay, she's kind of becoming mine. Like, she's, she's everybody's. And, but I really wanted to honor Lucy, how she built Minnie up to be who she is from the 80s. Sure. And definitely the lovely women who provided her voice previous to that. But it was definitely something like, I want to help modernize her for today. She's doing pop songs now. They're, she's branching out into different social medias, so it's a fun new way to take Minnie out into the world. Of course, you're still honoring, you know. Mm -hmm. That's my number one thing. I want to make sure I'm honoring both the character and Lucy herself. This is so magical. I'm sorry, I'm like getting emotional. Um, out, of, uh, out of curiosity, what has the process been like recording for Minnie? Because obviously during the craziness of the world, mm -hmm. I know a lot of things did shift from being in studio to some people recording at home. So what has the process been like for you? Uh, we were in studio, and that was just kind of like, you go into the studio. But when the pandemic hit, we all had to learn really quick how to record from home for anything. And I was in a a roommate and I, we, we were in a, a one-bedroom apartment because both of us were in unsafe living situations. So we were like, what if we just kind of go get a one-bedroom and like, you know, we'll, we'll curtain off the living room as a room for him because he's very easygoing and like, we'll just be here for a few months until we can get our feet back under us. And a few months after that, we were looking around and I was able to get Minnie. And we were just about to move to like a lovely two-bedroom place um, when the pandemic hit, and then so we were trapped in that one bedroom for a year and a half. And we made, we, we made it work, for sure, but I, t I had to tell him, like, the only place I can put, like, a little ramshackle booth is this little alcove 
because the one bedroom floor plan was the exact same as a two bedroom, but you just didn't have that second room. It was like a balcony. But due to the blueprint, there was this little alcove that just kind of existed where the wall would have been, and that was a perfect place to install foam and curtains, and I just made like a really ramshackle booth in that alcove. And I bought like this kit online on Amazon, like a Rode NT1 microphone. It came with a mic stand, a pop filter, and I bought a little like a tray you can screw on to put on my iPad for scripts. Like, so I bought all these little things to make it work. And the real fights were like, you know, is there a dog outside? Is there a car going by? Did the fridge turn on? Is someone mowing lawn? Did someone else's AC turn on and you can feel it? So it wasn't the, the best, but engineers are wizards. So they took my audio and really made it shine. And if there was something that really was not good, we would just re-record it another day. And I've, there's been some projects that came out like last year from other actors where you can tell like, this is not strong audio or they couldn't save this audio. And we did the best we could with what we had for sure. So I certainly give that actor grace and those engineers grace. Yeah, I but I heard that and I'm like, whew, okay, good thing my stuff is better than that. <laughs> but we, we, I did that and never had too many big concerns. And so when we did move to our, our two bedroom, two bathroom deluxe apartment, the, the deal breaker was I need a walk-in closet because I'm going to install that booth in the walk-in closet and it's it's passed every test so it's it's good yeah I have so much respect for actors and you know you essentially are producers and engineers it's like mm -hmm. you have to learn so fast and so quickly because during the craziness of the world you know we needed this more than ever mm -hmm. you know we, we needed Disney we needed the magic and animation and voiceover kept going because we could do it from home. There wasn't a need for a lot of the things they had in TV and film. So we were able to keep working, which was wonderful. But it, it also meant like I wanted to save like at least 5% of my income to like go to the actor's fund. That way those who can't work were taking care of each other. And what was it? Thank you. Yeah, that is so lovely. <laughs> well, we gotta look out for each other, for sure. And like with the strikes going on right now, it's, it's also important. So, but like, that's the quality. Like people are like, I'm just bummed. What if my show doesn't come back? And like, if you love that show, it's because it was written really well. And because these actors brought it to life for you. That's why we are striking, so they can receive their fair compensation for giving yeah. you yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. the things you like them. I don't understand the when it comes to like, the director's guild, the writer's guild, but it doesn't matter. Right. I know my guild and I know what, it's art, it's community. Yeah. And you, you, you can't get art for free. Yeah. It's so, it's true. Some, in some way, you gotta pay. Right, and you know, the people at the top are only making more and it just, it isn't fair. You can't take it with you and you're like, what are you gonna use it for? What you, why make money if you're not gonna spend it? Like, do you need a yacht? Oh. I don't need a yacht. I just want a two-week vacation to Hawaii for once, to <laughs> see what it's like. And then I'm good to go. That's it for the year. That's it. Yeah, that's all, that's all we're asking for. And, and just like, where do your priorities lie? So, you know, if people, like, they have families. Like, a lot of these people have families, so that actor fund's going to help them keep that roof over their head. Or if they need to work on something, you know, I'm not looking, I'm keeping my mouth shut. I'm not, I'm not a narc. But you got to do what you have to do for your family. That's and so, so well, my, well, another friend of mine, he was out of work due to the strike, and his wife got cancer. And healthcare doesn't cover anything for cancer. It's just horrible what counts and what doesn't count. So I just was like, 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 let's work something out and let me help fund your cancer treatments or the surgeries you need. And they're they're very much like they insisted like on a notarized contract and like, well, when I'm when I'm back to work and I'm put on my next movie whether he's directing or writing it, like, you know, oh, okay, well, we'll come to that when we get it, because right now, we need to do this right now. And I grew up frugal, and I know how to budget, and I'm very boring. So I was just like, <laughs> let's just put all that money in the bank for a future house. I'm like, well, I don't need a house right now, so get the, because I'd rather do that, and she'd be here, yeah. and she not be here. Are, There's, there is no choice. You are so low for so yeah. many reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Some questions from you. Yes, thank you. What's your name? Uh, Greg. Hi, Greg. Hey, um, I'd heard it's Brett who played plays Mickey. Brett, right? yes. He explained what the, how involved the process was getting the job when he got it. Yes. Uh, and I, I, what what did you go through to get that job? The exact opposite, because huh. Brett, I think there was like four callbacks, yeah. yes. and it took a couple months 
and he was like flying from Kansas yes, City, yeah. and it took a long time. And so I was anticipating the same thing, like, okay, maybe like four or five callbacks, how long is it gonna take? And it only took two, and we only had two because no one believed the people when they were like, oh, we found her, like, no, you didn't. How could you just find someone after three weeks? <laughs> Well, here I am. But um, after, after Lucy had passed away, there were, we had about like 10 days of a, of a mourning period. And then the audition went out to, to carry on the title. And everyone in town, I'm sure, read for it, or people out in Chicago or New York. Like, who knows how far that net went. And we had like a week to work on it. But I have been like practicing and studying for years, like since 2005, especially at Disneyland. So if you heard parades, <laughs> like listen to the soundtracks or here comes her line, Mickey, watch me twirl! If she's ice skating in the old Christmas parade. So that's how I knew I could do it. Like someone else had said, you sound just like her when I was just moving around. And that was kind of like planting the seed way back in 2005. So I would just watch everything, practice the nuance, listen to like, is there nasality? Is she scooping? What are, these are the little factors that make her pop, whether or not you sound exactly like her. You want to feel her. And so, I had a week to work on it. I brought over two, two best friends, like, grill me, listen to me, um, sent it off, forgot about it. And then a week later, they were like, oh, Disney wants to see you. So I did the first call back, wow. and like, there were seven of us. I don't know who the other seven are, and I never heard their versions, but we had, they narrowed it down to seven. We did the call back. I had like the most anxious week of my life after that, because this is the most important thing at the point of my life. And I was just freaking out. And then, like, it's like all my strings were cut when they said, oh, they have a second callback for you next week. Like, okay, I can sleep, I can breathe, I can eat now. And at the second callback, they had said, it was very much like the first, with long pauses in between, which made me nervous. And this, afterwards, they said, thank you so much, you know, we're going to have you go to Disney TV next week. I was like, oh, good, a third callback. I don't have to worry or freak out. And I get there, and it was the job. And I didn't know that. So I go in thinking it's a callback, and I'm like, no, this is the job. So I had no time to panic or second guess. But I didn't get that moment where like my agent would call and I would tastefully cry and it would be like this, this, this thing, this, this, this moving, shifting moment. And I called my agent after like, this was the job. Oh yeah, honey, didn't I tell you? <laughs> no. It must have slipped your mind. We, we can reenact a little bit right now if you'd like. I can... Oh, I've actually had people who do that. Oh my god. <laughs> What a great question. Uh, we're going to go back here first and then we'll come to you with the beautiful Kiki. Oh. Um, my name's Katie and I was wondering if it's fun being a Disney character. It's pretty fun because <laughs> I meet little ones like you. It's true because you're having fun watching these cartoons, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then that's what I'm, that's my job. I'm here to make you happy. And I see, and I get those rewards when I'm here at a convention to meet you. It's not just like a void when I go record or when we get to go see something and then the final product comes out and we enjoy watching it with my friends and family. But I don't know what anyone else is feeling. So if it's making you happy, then I'm happy. What a great question. Yeah. Very good question. Do you have any baked goods you can fly over to me? <laughs> <laughs> not today. That's okay. <laughs> you had a question? Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Desiree. Um, hi, Desiree. Uh, you're awesome. By Thank the you. Way, I am loving hearing you talk, but um, I had one question, or, well, two. First one, do you remember what the first uh, voice actor, where you started, like what show it was or what episode? Or For me? Yeah, like when you first became Minnie? Like, oh, I thought like, you meant in general. No, no, no. Like, well, for both. Yeah. For both? The very first thing I did was yeah. Mr. Pickles on Adult Swim, if anyone oh. remembers that. And, and they knew I did that when they hired me, so they can never bring that back. Right. You were Tommy on Mr. Pickles? Like, that's neither here or there. Come back with a warrant. Um, <laughs> For Minnie, the first thing we did that day when I realized it was the job yeah. was we had filled in a couple of additional lines for, for Minnie because the episode was still all Rusi, but we just slid in a couple reworked lines or one of them was it started off with Rusi and then ended with me and it was seamless and that's how I knew, oh thank God, I'm doing it because I couldn't tell. 
I couldn't tell if it was me or her. Oh, that's awesome. So that made me feel very good. And then the first original was that same day. We did these two little stop-motion animation bumpers that aired on Disney Junior, like two minutes long, where the characters go to a cabin up in the up in the woods and like the Christmas magic or it starts to snow and then it just melts because of the fireplace and Mickey just goes, well, now all we have is a wet floor. <laughs> the way he said it was so funny. <laughs> but those were the first two things to start off with. And then it was just filling in additional lines or, or cleaning up some things until Minnie's Botel, which was an episode of Mixed Up where I fully took over. And the eagle eyes were watching the credits after every episode. And one, one person, they were very smart, they're like, you know, when Mako passed away during Avatar, this name kept popping up in additional voices that hadn't been there before. And then when the new season started, that voice became Mako. So that's how they're like, maybe this is the same, because this Caitlin lady, she's never been on the show before, and now suddenly she's sliding in here. So they were very good at it. There was a lot of guesses of who it, would gonna, who it was gonna be, but I was like, whoever that lady is, she got it. <laughs> or sir. Did, did you have a second question? I just wanted you to talk like that again, because it's just awesome. I wanted to get a video for my kid. <laughs> What's your kid's name? Cade. Cade? Cade, yeah. Hello, Cade. How are you today? Did your mother leave you at home? Ooh, I wish you could come see me. But if not, here's a big hug. Ooh, and a big kiss. Mwah! Have a wonderful day, Cade. Bye-bye. <laughs> There's the tears. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The good kind, though. Yeah, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. You had a question? Yes, sir. Yes. You're getting emotional. You're getting emotional. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I think we need, like, we're you're getting, getting to emotional. emotional. <laughs> I know. I, to I also really love Clarabelle. I was about to say. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's April Winchell. She, uh, oh. She's oh. just so funny. If you had to pick another voice that you would have liked to do as, like, a dream, job at Disney or anywhere else, mm -hmm. who would it be? The, the two I have like for Disney, I've always loved Ava Gabor, so I would love to do Duchess from The Aristocats or Miss Bianca from Rescuers. Oh, I just love her so much. You're perfect! She's my favorite. I, you know, tell me so many. I just, I love Ava Gabor. And then, yes! I need a reboot! I need a reboot! And fun fact, Lucy actually did Duchess. Um, in this little brief, remember House of Mouse? Yeah. I loved House of Mouse. Me too. And there was one of the gags where Daisy answers the phone, and she goes, you know, call for Duchess. And a couple princesses raise their hands, and then Duchess comes out, darlings, she said Duchess, not princess. <laughs> and it was Rusi, and like, I didn't know you could do that. Like, there's just other characters out there. And then I've always loved, um, you know, who doesn't love June Foray as Witch Hazel? I love June Frey, but right before she did Witch Hazel, B. Berendette did it, and I loved B's version as well. But it would so with the Hansel and Gretel, you know, come into my house, children, and I'll give you some candy apples and sauerkraut and some pineapple upside down cake. Ta -ta -ta -ta, ta -ta -ta -ta. Oh dear, there goes my supper. <laughs> and then the genie turns her into the beautiful woman. Magic mirror on the wall. Who's the ugliest one of all? It was just so much fun. So I, I would say Witch Hazel for Looney Tunes, maybe in the future. Yeah. I'd love to do Duchess or Miss Bianca if there's ever a, a reboot. That would be fun. Oh, and, and just, there's so many fun voices out there. And there's actors who have a huge amount. Like Jeff Bennett, look him up. He does Merlin, he does Geppetto. He does Mortimer for like the, the, wack, the wacky shorts. And he's very good at it. But, and Jim Cummings, of course. There's like untold Dude. amounts of yeah. characters. He's the god of... Like He's, I, how is he not a Disney legend? I, mm. And Corey Burton, like, it, of all people, Corey Burton, like, I have no words because what word can describe him? He's just so amazing. I found out that um, Jay, uh, Jason Isaacs Martin. Martin, yeah, he was mm -hmm. in Nashville, and I like, he does. Reach out. like I was yeah, like, I moved to the same state as Jason Marston. Yeah. Oh, and he is so open, like. He loves meeting fans. You can just DM him right on Twitter. He yeah. loves meeting fans. So cool. And he's, he's so many people's childhoods. You know, you got Binks, you got Max, you got... Let's text him right now. You have his number? Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> what? What? Let's take a video, can we? Yeah, let's take a video and send it to him. Okay. What, what, what should we say? Should we start with you and then go uh, to the audience? Okay. This is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Hey, J. 
Jason, we are at Fanboy Knoxville, and we're talking about fun Disney voices and incredible voices of our childhoods. And somebody mentioned you, and I had to agree, you are phenomenal. What do you say, everyone? Give Jason some love! Oh, he's delightful. Yeah, he's and he, like, he was so he open. He's one of my gold people to meet. Oh, you will. Yeah. If, if, you know, he, I'm, sure, I'm sure he'll do all the circuits around here. It just kind of depends on scheduling, I'm sure. Yeah. But he's... You know, and uh, Bill Farmer, the Belfort Theater in Nashville, they showed the Goofy movie. And then yeah. They did, like, a showing of it. I heard about that. And that's... And he's definitely like a voice of my childhood, too. And when I first met him, he's like, Oh, I'll be at San Diego Comic-Con. Meet me here at this time. I'll sign your DVD. Just the nicest guy. My so great favorite character was Goofy, so I grew up with Goofy, mm -hmm. and that was just my little no, Oh, yeah. So and, and like, Goofy movie, it's like it's in its second wave. Like, it's always been around, and it's always been loved. But I love Powerline. Like, I want to be yeah. Powerline at yes. 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 Like, Max looks great in a Powerline outfit. I yes. want Max to over as, like, like well, and fun fact, I went to New York um, through college for this program, and it was around 2005, 2006. I want to say summer of 2005, maybe. I'm blanking. But I went to go see Hairspray, because it was on Broadway, and Tevin Campbell was seaweed in the show. And I was like, I want to meet Tevin Campbell. So I waited at the stage door, respectfully, and he comes out, and everyone out there is like cheering from because a new album of his, I believe, had just dropped. So they were definitely there loving his album. And he comes up to me, and I could see it in his eyes, like, what are you doing here? This tiny little lady, kind of off to the side. And I was like, I just wanted to say, I really love you singing for Powerline. It's, a, you know, it's been 10 years, I think, at that point, but it's still relevant. I work at Disneyland. Everyone there loves that movie. They know the perfect, like, just telling him all about how important it still was. And he got so choked up. He was like, I love doing that guy. Thank you. Like, it really meant a lot that this little project is still well, I got relevant. Well, goofy to do the perfect cast at Disney World for mm -hmm. the last. I just, I like, my heart melted. I was just like, it's good. It's just that whole movie, Powerline, everything. It's, just, it's so good. Fundamentally childhood. And what a great soundtrack, too. Yeah. yeah. So I think we have time, maybe. Okay, it's at through. I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Yeah. Go ahead. We'll do you. Yeah, go ahead. And three. Okay, there we go. Well, first of all, I just wanted to do, on behalf of all of us here, I would like to thank you for adding so much magic to our lives, as the various roles that you have done. Oh, thank you so much. That makes me so happy. <laughs> But then, yeah. my question is, is, have you ever used the mini voice for minor evil? You know, it's going through a drive through and then just hit him with the voice. <laughs> <laughs> minor evil, I like that. Yeah. Well, I've def like, I've dropped in a time or two and said a word or two among friends, as long as no one's got their phone out. Um, but I actually, I would do um, accents through drive throughs So I'd go through Jack in the Box, and I'm like, let's practice an accent. Like, hello, I'd like one of your um, hamburgers with your potato crisps and uh, a bubbly fame uh, so soda. Like, and then it's like, oh, now I gotta keep it up while I go and pay for it. So I'm just like, okay, well, let's just make up different words for different items, like a burger and fries. Oh, a hamburger and potato crisps. So just making up some weird stuff for it. And I always get a kick out of it, and I can see them like, she doesn't know what she's doing in this country. <laughs> like, I absolutely do. I'll take my card back. <laughs> so not quite minor evil, but definitely enough to, like, make someone double take. <laughs> All right, so, and then over there. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I love to hear that you're able to inject a little bit of yourself into Minnie, mm -hmm. now that you're voicing her. But I wanted to ask, how has Minnie, and voicing such a large, legendary, iconic character, how has that changed you? I, what's the term? I'm an extroverted introvert. I, I get very nervous, like, meeting new people if there's not, like, a middleman to help me, or, like, there are people here, like, I really want to meet Wayne Knight. Space Jam is my favorite movie, and he has my favorite line. And my roommate loves Kurt Angle, so I have no problem going up to Kurt and like, oh, I'm here on behalf of my roommate, and talking to him, no problem, because it was for someone else. But for me, I just get nervous, like, I don't want to bug them. What if they don't have the time? So a third person to help me meet people. But once I got me, like, I'm going to more conventions or more Disney events and meeting so many people, it's really helping me learn, like, don't be scared of 
people not liking you, because that's probably not going to happen. You're your own worst critic. Be open to like meeting where they're coming from, why are they here, accept any praise you get, double it and dole it back out to the people you like so it keeps cyclical. And it, it's helping me just to be more open and out in the world to get to know more people. So that, that's what I would say. Come on, family. Woo. Yay. And you, my dear. Not yet. Um, uh, nothing so far in Kingdom Hearts. That was Rusi, and then they may have like made Kingdom Hearts three, maybe I believe during the time she was sick or so. So I don't think Minnie was in it much. Um, but it, moving forward, if they do have more Kingdom Hearts games, I am more than happy to jump on that and get involved in that. And I do know we have Illusion Island coming out very soon, which is a very unique game. It's, it's got a very stylized look to it. It's kind of like the the shorts a little bit with some unique dialogue. Like when we got the script, it was like, can we say some of this stuff? Like, nothing bad. But one of them was like, they're cutting through the bushes with a machete and then Minnie puts it back in her purse. And she looks around and like, what was the line? It was so funny. Like they, they see sparkles around an item and they're looking and go like, is everyone seeing this or am I passing out? And it was the funniest line to me. Like, she wouldn't say that, like, so we changed the line, but it was just so funny. And, like, that's going to be my new catchphrase. Do you guys see this? Or am I passing out? Yeah. <laughs> it was just so funny to me. So weird. But that was a very fun game. Dreamlight Valley as well. The Disney Animal Crossing. So, but it's very fun. And there's other work coming out as well. Because it helps when this is your natural voice. And you just flip it up here. <coughs> so I have, a little, I have a little more range than... I can do more things. Yeah. You are so awesome. Aww, thank Seriously. You. This has been like <laughs> so much fun. And I feel like this is necessary in so many ways. You know, like the world can be a crazy place and it's nice to be able to, you know, hang out with someone like you. You're such a thank positive, you. wonderful, warm person. Thank you for like sharing this afternoon with us. Absolutely. I'll come back in.